Hello. Good morning, everyone. It's Robin. I am so glad to be here. So today, this morning, we are going to be doing our first paint tutorial here on the group. And I'm really excited. We've got these sweet, sweet angels that we're going to be painting. So I hope everybody's having a good day. And I hope that um, you'll get a chance to hop on and say hi. And if you happen to catch this on the replay, um, put a little message in the post and say hi. Um, let me know, you know, you can do a hashtag replay. Let me know that you have um, watched this video. So these little sweet angels, they are a quick and easy project. They would be great for your um, craft fairs. And I have several here that I have cut out um, because I thought it would be really fun to make them for for gifts for Christmas. But so that way I'm going to get kind of a head start just for like a neighborhood gift or um, to give to a friend. So they're just a quick and easy and just just really so sweet. And then they have the four little tags that go with them. So you can choose between hope, love, joy, and peace. So depending on which one, you know, maybe you feel that your friend will need, but um, I'm really excited to paint these. I know that um, sometimes um, those of you who haven't done much painting with score lines, um, I don't want that to scare you. So um, I'm going to kind of show you how I like to do it. It's kind of a quick and easy way. So it's not anything that's that you should be um, nervous about if you haven't done with the score lines. So this, this is scored and not engraved. But um, a lot of times when I do my score lines, um, I double them up so that they score twice. That way they get a little bit thicker, a little bit deeper. Um, and that's kind of how these little score lines are on here. So anyway, I'm really excited. I don't know if you can see a sneak peek behind me. My camera's a little bit low. <coughs> Excuse me. My camera's a little bit low, but over here, I've got the sleds painted up. I have two of them painted up. So, um, I'm going to get some photographs of those so that I can get them on the Etsy shop. So, and if you aren't, um, if you don't know where the Etsy shop is, it is Center Street Decor. That is the name of the Etsy shop. So where, uh, where you will find all of the SVG files available to you. And there are a few DIY kits. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, got a cough this morning. Got my water. I'm a water drinker, so. I try to drink a lot of water during the day. Um, but we have, let's see, I'm making sure that I am live here. I'm pretty sure I am. Sorry, you'll get my finger in there. So, um, okay, there we go. Now I can see, now I can see some things here. Oh. I'm like, I don't see the live little thing. So sorry, my fingers are all in the way. Um, but I see it now. So anyway, um, yeah, so we've got our cute little sleds back here. And I'll be painting those up um, hopefully in the next day or two. So that's going to be really fun. So let's get painting our angels. And like I said, these are quick and easy. They are cute. And fun. And I hope that if you get a chance to paint some up, that you will post some pictures of your sweet angels. Because um, I know we all might paint them just a little bit differently. So I'm going to flip you down. Um, eventually, I'm working on kind of like my um, a new computer or a video setup, but I don't have that going yet. So right now, we are just going to work with what we've got. So, okay. Anyway, thanks for hopping on, you guys, and for joining me. Like I said, if you are catching this on the replay, just click hashtag replay and say hi. Let me know that you got a chance to watch our cute angels. Okay, so our cute little angels, we've got the three different pieces, and that's what makes them a chunky shelf sitter. And if you, if you want to just paint just the top layer and use it, 
you know, lean it up on a tiered tray or something, that's an option as well. But in order to, for me to make them stand up by themselves, I do the three different layers. And then she's got her wings that we will attach to the back side. She has her halo. And then she has her little tag. So I have two of the angels I thought I would go ahead and work on today. So I've got the wings. I, now this is this, they're, they're in the three different sizes. And um, I've already done the sizing for you, remember. So we have the small, the medium, and then here is our large size. So you can see kind of a, a size different. Um, I might be upside down to you too, but these are the size difference and the small, oh, small one's just so sweet. Here she is right here. So you can kind of see a little bit of the size difference. So we're gonna, right now I'm just gonna paint the medium one and then I have a small one that I'll just work on too. But I have, like I said, I have several of these sweet little angels cut out so I can, I can give them as gifts for Christmas time. Give them to friends, your neighborhood gifts. They're a quick and easy paint. They would be, I think they would be great at your craft fairs. So what I want to start with is um, you know, however you like to paint is, you know, kind of up to you. But I'll just kind of show you my method. I'm just gonna, I've got white paint here, and I'm actually just gonna use a makeup sponge. A bit of white paint on here. <clears throat> so I'm going to use these makeup sponges. So another thing is whenever I do anything with scored lines, I usually have a poker tool, a toothpick or something handy, just in case I get in those score lines. But um, for the most part, um, I do a pretty clean, it's pretty clean. So just like with all my paintings, <clears throat> I'm just going to tap off Get a little bit of paint, tap off any excess. And then when I start, I, I try not to start where my score lines are because I think I have the most paint um, ready to go. So I kind of tap outside of those score lines and then come a little bit close. Now here is a trick that I like to do. With this wood, this is just quarter inch plywood that we purchased from Lowe's. There's lots of grooves in here. So I actually can drag this paint. And if you just do a very gentle drag without squishing your sponge, you're not gonna get in those score lines. At least that's what I have found for me. Okay, so if you need to get a little bit more paint, remember I just kind of start off, not on top of where the score lines are, and then I'm just doing a gentle drag. So there's not very much paint on my sponge. Just a gentle drag. Okay, so now I do, I do wanna go over it one more time. But if you look at that, you can still see my score lines really good. I didn't squish the paint inside there. So it's just a really careful, gentle, gentle drag. Too much paint and yeah, you will probably get a lot of um, in those score lines. And if you want to do it in those score lines and cr make it kind of all a white, you can. You can actually squish it in those score lines if that's the look you're going for. Okay, so just very gently, I'm gonna tap off some of that extra paint and then I'm just gonna start dragging. And I usually go with like the grain of the wood. Just pull. Okay, and if you wanna do a tappy sponge all over it, like I do on some of my projects, you very well can do that. Okay, otherwise we're just gonna drag and pull. <clears throat> I 
and there's lots of different um, because it's a plywood and there's just lots of li little crevices. Sometimes I need to go over some of those areas a little bit more. So if you look at this, and this, this is actually a really pretty look. If you want to just leave it with seeing some of that wood behind there, you can do that. Um, or if you want a more solid look, let's go over it again. And up in the areas where the score lines aren't, if you want to push your sponge a little bit more to get in some of those crevices, you can. But just I just recommend not pushing it where you have um, where you have those scored lines. Just very gently, just drag, going with the wood grain is what I typically do. And you can see I'm coming up into her little head because we're gonna cut where you're gonna do her, we'll paint her face in just a bit. Okay, so I think that looks really good. If you can see that, it's much more solid now. So, like I said, you can do kind of like the, um, like where you can see some of the wood grain in there. So, but this one is much more solid. And you'll see I have paint on the edges, but I, I love to clean up the edges with a, I have a furniture marker that I buy from the Dollar Tree that I will show you in just a minute when we get to that. When we get to that, let's go ahead and finish painting this sweet angel. And just drag it and get my little readers on. So, and if you do get in some of those lines, just pick up your poker tool and get it, clean it out. Because sometimes I do too. So just touching it very, just very soft. If you have some stubborn areas that it just won't go into those little creases and you want to get them into it, sometimes I just tap it up and down. You know, any score lines, if you feel that you need to, and then I tap gently on top. Because sometimes when you clean out those score lines, you get a little bit of a ridge. Some of that paint lifts up on, on the outsides of your score lines. And so I usually tap it with my sponge just to kind of clean those up so it doesn't stay up there. Okay, let's do her little wings. We'll let her body her body dry before we do her head. So again, you can just paint these with a paintbrush or you can just do your sponge. Same thing, you can go over here, but if you can see with this MDF, it's it doesn't go as solid, so I usually tap it. I can get a thicker paint coat so that's why I tap and I'll usually do two coats on top of this MDF just tap 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 And if you've used these sponges before, you'll know that the more that you, you squish, the harder you squish, the more you'll get some of that on the outside edges. And I don't want to get too much of that. Just 
still just kind of doing a light tap. And then just kind of going back and forth over my little area. I think these angels are, they would be great sellers for you. At least I hope I am. I hope they are. That's, that is my goal with the designs that I create. I want them to be really good sellers for you. Okay, so we're just putting those aside. Oh, while we're at it, I'm going to do our little, um, our tags. And same thing. Now, I actually engrave these. I, I've seen some people score them, and that's fine, too. If you score them, it's more of an outline um, font that you'll get. But if I engrave it, I can get the solid. That's what I like to do, but we'll do different things. So again, you want to be careful not to get inside of those engraved marks. So you're just going to tap very gently. And I use, I usually use like a small piece of sponge on these. But since I already have this in white, I'm just going to just tap gently. And again, just like the other, I just have my little score tool handy. In case I need that, I think I am going to grab a smaller piece of sponge because I just feel like I'm, I have more control with a smaller piece of sponge on a small area. So I just use the same, the same makeup sponges and I cut them into like orders. And these are going to need just a, a couple of coats. Just tap back and forth very gently. I'm just, I'm almost just barely touching the wood. So we're going to need just a, another coat on that. I've got a fuzzy on there. Okay. Hi, McGee. My little dog decided to come in the room. So he came to say hi to us. Over the wings again. And with these cute little angels, um, if you can see the ones that I painted, I actually did um, a little bit of a shading on her. So, and that's certainly optional. If you're not a fan of shading, you don't have to do the shading. but I will show you how I do the shading because that's, that's kind of like my thing. That's kind of, I like to do the shading. So just getting these little angel wings. Okay, so that's good. Set that aside and let that dry. And let me see how their bodies look. They look pretty good. I can see just a few little areas that I can see the wood, but I don't know that I really want to. I think it's okay. It looks good to me. So the little halos we're going to do in gold. And then the little heads, you know, just keep, choose whatever kind of um, color that you like to use for the, the skin. I am just going to use, this is a, this is just a, uh, it's called medium flesh. I've had this for a really long time. It's apple barrel. So you can tell by the packaging that 
it's a different different packaging than what they do now. So yeah, I've had this a really long time. But they probably still have the same color, so. Okay, so I like, when I paint, I like to use a little bit of water. So I'm just gonna tap off my brush because I don't want my brush to be loaded with water. And then I'm just gonna paint from like the inside out. Now there's not a score line to show you where to go as far as like around where her little neck is. So what I do is I just, like I said, I just go kind of from the inside out. And then what I do is I'm just gonna do like an imaginary line. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of a curve from one, one side to the other. And if I have a little bit of water in my brush, it can go pretty smoothly. I'm just gonna take you just making a little bit of a curve right there. And that's it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry about that if it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. This is just a hand, this is a handmade. Little head. Again, if I just go from like the inside out, I get less, um, less drag over the edge of her, the outside edge. I'll just do the little curve start at that corner and then just go around and then I'll just go back you can see mine's not perfect and that's okay it doesn't have to be she's super cute and I might only need one coat of this we'll see when it dries Okay, let's give another coat to our little tags here. And you can see if you are working in, like doing multiples, you just go from one to the other, from one, one little piece to the other. And you guys are probably used to doing that when you do your, your craft fairs, when you're making a bunch at the same time. And I usually just do two coats of this white on here. Get my little poker tool. Okay, so that's it for my little tags. Let's do our little, her little halo and I use um, just a gold color, again, old paint. I have painted for years and years, so I have a lot of paints that are pretty old. This is called Kim Gold. I don't even know if they have this anymore, but um, just find you a good gold. I have a couple different golds that I use. It's very, very nice and very metallic. Again, just grabbing just a piece of sponge. And then I'm just going to tap, tap on the halos. This gold actually gives really good coverage. I only need to do one coat. The only thing I can see is like with this one, there's like little tiny bubbles. And so I... Just try to tap very gently where those little tiny bubbles are. 
Okay, so that's it for the halo. So that's pretty quick and easy. And so for this um, little tag, I like to, oh, you know what? I realized I just made a mistake. I didn't even look at my little sample. I don't know why I painted the tags white because these are gold. I'm silly. Okay, no worries. I'm gonna grab more tags. Sometimes I put my, my little my little teeny pieces in these in little plastic bags. So I've got peace. Let's see. Here's a joy. Here's a hope. So I need a medium sized tag. And then a A medium size and then a small. Okay, so here's here's peace and joy. I was just trying to do something different than I already done because I have a joy and a peace. Here's hope. Let's do hope in the medium. And then let's do the love in the small. So we're just switching those. Yeah. I mean, you can do them white and then just give it some highlight. So your angels are kind of all white. That would be okay, too. And apparently that's what I was going for, huh? Oh, my goodness. Okay. So we're just going to set these aside. You know, I probably could have just painted my gold right over the top of those. I'm not sure how it would have turned out, but it's an option. Okay. We want our little tags, at least how I did these little guys. My little tags are gold. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking of the tag on the sleigh because my little tag on my sleigh is white. And then I just, I gave it a gold um, highlight. I just went around the edges. That's what I was thinking when I was painting the tags. And thinking in the head of the next project I'm painting already. So again, once I put this gold on there, there's little tiny bubbles. So I'm just very gently going over just to kind of pop those little bubbles. And like I said, I only need the one coat of this gold because it's it, it has really good coverage. Okay, so these heads look like they're drying really good. It looks like I need to do a little bit around the neck, but I'm going to grab my heat tool so we can speed this up, you guys. banging going on. Let's just add a little bit. Just kind of following that line that I made. There. Okay, so now we're just ready to do um, some of the shading if that's the if you like to do shading on your little characters. And so that's what I'm going to do. Um, but I am typically typically kind of a heavy shader. I like my shading to be um, I just want it to show up. But on my angels, I was really careful not to do heavy shading. It's just I just wanted it to be pretty subtle. So I'm just using my burnt umber. I've got my um, angled brush here. And I 
got I have water on it. I'm going to tap off some of that excess water. Just tip just the corner in. And then I'm just going to drag. Okay, I can see a lot of water on my brush. So I just want it just pretty subtle. Okay. Just going to come around that edge. And then just kind of follow those scallops. And it's just pretty subtle, just a little bit. I'll let some of that dry. And we'll start going over the other one. Over on the scallop, scallop, scallop. Okay, and we'll come back to this one. So just a little bit light. So I don't want anything that's really heavy like my other, you know, I love to do the heavy highlighting. Okay, so now we're just going to go, and I'm just going to go all the way around this little sweet angel. Just a little bit. I just don't want it really heavy. So I'll just start right here by her dress. Drag it along the bottom. There was a lot of water in that, so that's why I turned it over and dried it on the paper towel. So it's just given a little bit of a subtle, a little subtle shadow. But like I said, these would be Still super cute if you didn't do any of the shadowing too. I think they would be darling. We're gonna go around her little head. And then the only other area that I did a little bit of shadow to is I did underneath. So underneath the chin right here. So we're going to do a little bit of that. So it just kind of looks like there's her chin is sticking out just a little bit. And sometimes if I get a waterline, so I can see a waterline that has dried on her little head. 
I'll get just a little bit of water on my brush. Tap as much off and then just kind of clean up that little, that little water line. Okay, sweet. Ready to put her together. She cute. She's going to be cute. Oh, we got to do her little face. Her cheeks. So her cheeks, some people use um, like different paint. Um, but what I like to use is I like to use chalk to do her little cheeks. And I've done both. I've done sometimes I've done paint. Sometimes I've done chalk. And so I'm just going to take a little bit of these pinks over here and I just kind of tap in both of them. And then I just kind of go into the center. And if there's too much on your, too much, you can use a Q-tip too. I just happened to, these little came with the kit and I just still use them. So if you have too much, tap off on your paper towel. Just keep going in a circle. I think they're just sweet as ever, these little angels. Okay, that's it. It's cute, cute, sweet little cheeks. That's all we need. And then I do little dip dots for the eyes right there, just using um, just a stylus, or I might use a toothpick for these because I want them pretty small. I will do the eyes after I glue everything together because sometimes the eyes have a little bit of depth to them, and then that way you want them to dry. Okay, let's glue, let's start gluing these everything together. I had struggles when I was cutting these out but I will clean these up. Okay, I'm gonna get my stick fast. Oh, and you know the other thing that I just realized I didn't do? I like to finish the back side with a baby wipe and some burnt umber paint. Yeah, this piece of wood really struggled, but I'm gonna clean it up. Okay, it's a little bit bowed. That's why I'm struggling with this piece. Every once in a while, you'll get a piece that's a little bit bowed. So it doesn't grab the glue right away. Because usually when the glue will grab right away. see some gaps through there so I know this piece is a little bit bowed so it just needs a little bit of extra tension to hold on to there okay let's get our ribbon and add to our tag and I'll show you how to finish that up. So I just have a piece of, um, a piece of this, well, I don't even know if you call it twine, but it's the, like the silver cording, I guess that would be a good name for it, like silver cording. So I just tie, you can tie a little bit of, of a knot right there to hold that in place. And then I just cut a couple strips of this white because I wanted to keep her 
you know, just a kind of a heavenly, heavenly white. That's kind of what I was going for, I guess. So I just cut two pieces on here. And then I'm just going to tie a knot. Okay, so this is how I did my little tag. So we just did put the cording in there, tied a knot, and then I've got all these pieces, and now it just needs a little bit of a haircut. And then this I will glue onto there. So what I like to do is um, if you want to glue it flat on, you can, but sometimes I use like, a, I call them like a riser. Sometimes I just save little scrap pieces from other projects. Um, these are, I actually have a few little pieces of rectangles that I'm going to, I'm going to use as a riser. So you don't, you don't have to do the riser if you don't want to. I like to do that sometimes with some of my projects. Just give it a little bit of a lift off of the a lift off of the angel's dress. And now we have her halo, and her halo only covers just a little bit on her head. So when I put that glue on, I'm going to tap some of that off so it doesn't squeeze out. And then just decide where you want to put that. I'll just hold it in place. Just a little bit. And I forgot to clean up her edges. Let me show you how I do that. So this is just a furniture marker that I purchased just from Dollar Tree. It comes in a set of three. And I usually use the black. The brown sometimes will give you some good coverage, but um, the black is my favorite. And I wouldn't say they last a super long time, but I have purchased more expensive markers thinking, you know, that they would last me a long time, they would be better. But I just find um, these inexpensive ones work great. So, so far, that is my kind of my go-to. And I'm just rubbing along the edges. And you can see, because my wood, a lot of it is just, the way it was cut, it was just really bad. I had some edges that I had to, I either probably didn't cut it all the way through, so maybe I had to use an X-Acto knife. So, by cleaning up the edges, you don't even notice my wood is crazy like that. Clean up any edges so you see how much that the top of that little head. But just use your marker, go over it, and it cleans up. Especially if you are selling your items at craft fairs. Um, a finished item always looks so nice. And some people really look for that. They look for um, projects that are really finished. So one thing that I do with my little items is if you look on the back, I have the brown um, instead of the wood. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a baby wipe I just want one baby wipe. They're all coming out. Okay, so I still have my burnt umber paint over here. And if you want to just use, do a quick, quick wash or however you like to do it. But this is just kind of how I do. I just put my little baby wipe in there. And then I'm just going to rub it on there. And I don't have to get perfect, complete coverage. But just so it gives it kind of a finished look. 
So I'll do it on the back side of the angel, also on the wings, even though it doesn't, even though it's MDF and the color is gonna be a little bit different. Um, but if you used um, all wood, depending on what you use, maybe it will look completely the same, but mine look a little bit different, but I still do that same little method on there. Okay. And then I'm just gonna let that dry a little bit. I'll attach the wings. I do want that to dry a little bit. I'll set that aside. Go ahead and put our little other tag on. Oh, I cut that one short. That's going to be kind of tricky. Usually I like to work with a long piece. So I don't struggle too much. So I just cut. Couple pieces of ribbon, just like I showed before. Try not to struggle here because my short little pieces. We can do this, you guys. Okay, got it. Yeah, I like to use, I like to work with a longer piece. And so, I mean, sometimes I end up cutting a lot off, but it just is so much easier to tie. Okay, sometimes I'll put it on and see if that looks good. And I think that that does look good on her. Okay, grabbing the back pieces again. Get that burnt ember paint. And the baby white, because it's damp, it just helps to spread that color. And I like that. There's not much, not much paint left. Okay, set those aside. And again, if you want to go around your wings to clean them up too, you can. Just to give them that finished look. I usually like to try to do the marker before I glue everything together. Sometimes I just kind of get in a hurry and start doing things and I'm like, oh yeah, I've got to clean it up. Clean up her cute little head. In her body. There, that's it. Cleaned up. Cute. Let's glue this cute little gal together. Find my glue. It's right in front of me. Isn't that the thing? Do you find that when you get crafting? So the middle piece you don't do anything with. Just just get sandwiched between on this project. So you get crafting and then you next thing you know you can't find your scissors, right? It's kind of crazy sometimes. They're right in front of you and you haven't left your chair. Yeah, that happens to me. I think it happens to all crafters. Because we work with so many different 
um, mediums and different elements that different supplies, they're all over the place. Just make sure, especially the bottom, make sure that's lined up. Yeah, because you want you want your cute little angel to be able to stand on her own. Okay, so there's a little bit of wood that I need to clean up on this one. Just to have those, all those little edges nice. And you might find that the brown matches your wood better because we all cut differently. So, okay, I had a little riser piece. I'm just going to put our little riser on there. Put our tag on there. Now her sweet little halo. And again, I like to tap off some of the excess so it doesn't squeeze out. The last thing, whoops, got a little glue. The last thing is we need to do her little eyes and glue her wings on. So let's glue the wings on before we do the eyes. Otherwise we might mess those up, right? So I like to just bring them down a little bit. So you decide where you want to, you know, how, how low or how high you want your little wings. And I just put some glue kind of just in that center area. You don't want to get any glue on your outside. And if you want to turn her over and just line her up. And then let the glue do what it's supposed to do. And I'm going to put her up there. hope I'm staying in frame. So with all of this. Just gonna look, line it up where I think her little wings need to go. There we go. Okay, so the last thing is her little eyes. And like I said, you can use a toothpick um, if you want your eyes to be just little teeny. I think I would be okay with using um, this little stylus here. And this is again, Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree at its finest. Dollar, dollar twenty-five, whatever you want to call it. Okay, we need a little bit of black. That's what I like to do. Their little eyes. But I hope this tutorial helps you to paint your angels. To see that they are quick and easy. I know I've been on here for um, nearly an hour, but. Um, I'm doing two and I'm also just trying to talk you through the process because I want you to be successful at your painting. So, okay, I'm gonna use the smallest in. I'm just gonna barely touch that little paint. And then I'm just gonna do, just touch, barely touch into that paint. And then I'm just gonna touch. And it's okay if her little eyes are uneven. If they're a little bit um, like not straight across, don't worry about that. I like that look sometimes. So don't even worry about that. She will be cute. I'm gonna use the little bit larger end to do this angel. Let's touch. And touch. I think that looks pretty cute. If you want a bigger dot for the eyes, sometimes that's cute. 
when I do that, I use the end of a, a paintbrush. I just find one of the ends that's, you know, pretty small and will work. Okay, you guys, tell me what you think of these angels. Tell me if this is a project that you think that you would like to make. And, you know, if you think that I think the angel would be a good seller at your um, boutiques or your craft fairs that you do. You turn around so that you can see them. But I think they turned out really cute. I think they're pretty sweet, you guys. I'm just going to tip you up right here. Probably the next thing we're going to be painting is the sleighs that are over here. Our Christmas sleighs. They're pretty cute. And again, they're shelf sitter. So anyway, I hope you all had a fun time hanging out with me. I'm really glad that those of you that hung out with me and stuck with me. Oh, I have some comments. They're adorable. Thank you, Vicki. I hope that you will um, make these angels. I think they're just darling. and. They're a quick and easy. You could probably do a bunch for a craft fair or even, um, like I said, they are great for um, the, I, the gifts. That's what I'm going to make some for is neighborhood gifts and friendship gifts. Um, they're just a quick one. They're cute in a little basket with some other items that you might want to give away. So anyway, I hope you all have a fantastic day and we will talk to you later. Bye.